Hi there, welcome. This course is all about initiating a project successfully. If you haven't gone through our foundational course yet, we recommend checking it out. It covers the foundations of project management and contains lots of helpful information for anyone wanting to start a career in this field. There are lots of people around the world like you who are hoping to learn the skills to get a project management role. Maybe you prefer to take a specialized certification rather than a four-year degree. Maybe you're looking for an affordable way to stand out among competition. Maybe you're interested in changing your career. Whatever your reason for being here, we are glad you've joined us. This program is rooted in the belief that a strong foundation in project management can help anyone start a great career as a project manager. Before we begin this course, let me introduce myself. My name is Joanne, and I'll be your instructor for this course. As a senior program manager at Google for the past eight years, I have worked on cross-functional projects involving product managers, software engineers, user experience designers, network operations, customer support, and more to build software used at Google and used by Google Cloud customers. I began my career working as a liaison between customers and engineers, documenting requirements on software development projects. As I became involved in larger projects, I started to manage the timelines of the projects and coordinate the work of the different teams that had to get involved to finish the project. Before I knew it, I was the de facto project manager. I have accumulated my knowledge through formal and informal training, finding practical application in finance, insurance, and tech companies. I'm super excited to be sharing with you more about the project management discipline. During this course, you'll learn all the steps for kicking off a project. We'll start with an overview of initiation, which is the phase that allows ideas to come together and form the beginnings of a plan for a project. You'll identify the individual components of initiation, like the project scope, goals, and deliverables. You'll also learn how to measure the success of a project. This is a super important piece of the puzzle. After all, you want to be able to meet or exceed all of the requirements for a successful project, right? Later, we'll talk about how to identify stakeholders. Stakeholders have a direct interest in the project's completion and success. We'll teach you about some really helpful tools you can use to define project roles and responsibilities, and more tools and resources you typically need to complete the work of a project. Finally, we'll introduce documentation that can help your team prepare for project kickoff. Exciting, right? The skills you'll learn in this course will help you start projects of your own. We can't wait to get into these topics with you. Because initiation is the first phase of the project, it's really important to get it right. A well-planned initiation results in a strong foundation for your project and sets it up for success. Initiation begins after a problem or opportunity has been identified within an organization. Often, stakeholders like senior leaders at a company will initiate a project to address a specific need for the business. For example, perhaps the company would like to roll out a new product, improve employee well-being, or reduce costs in a certain department. It's your responsibility as the project manager to help identify the project goals, resources, and other details based on initial discussions with the project stakeholders. Even though someone else might come up with an idea for the project, it's still your job to figure out all the important pieces that need to come together in order to get the work done. The initiation phase is a crucial time for asking stakeholders the right questions, performing research, determining resources, and clearly documenting the key components of a project. Doing this will help you solidify the scope or the boundary of the project. If this seems a bit overwhelming, don't worry. We'll talk more about project scope later on in this course. If a project isn't initiated properly, things can go wrong pretty fast. For example, without sufficient understanding of the project's goals, you might underestimate what resources you need or how long the project might take. 
or without agreeing with stakeholders on what success looks like, you might think the project was completed successfully, while the stakeholders might think it didn't accomplish their goals. Getting on the same page and gaining clarity during the initiation phase can save a lot of time and extra work for everyone throughout the project. Proper initiation also helps ensure that the benefits of the project outcomes will outweigh the costs of the project. To determine this, you'll do what's called a cost-benefit analysis, which is the process of adding up the expected value of a project, the benefits, and comparing them to the dollar cost. To do this, you will work with stakeholders to consider a few questions. To determine the benefits of a project, those questions might include, what value will this project create? How much money could this project save our organization? How much money will it bring in from existing customers? How much time will be saved? How will the user experience be improved? And to determine the costs of the project, those questions might include, how much time will people have to spend on this project? What will be the one-time costs? Are there any ongoing costs? What about long-term costs? The benefits of a project should always outweigh the costs. So it's really important that you consider these questions early on. Coming up, we'll talk more about the initiation phase and explore the key components of initiating a project. There are several key components of initiation that you need to consider in order for your project to be successful. Goals, scope, deliverables, success criteria, stakeholders, and resources. First, you need to consider the goals of a project. The goal is what you've been asked to do and what you're trying to achieve. All projects should have clear goals, and often those will be determined by senior company leaders with your help. From there, you would begin to consider the project scope. This is the process to define the work that needs to happen to complete the project. You also need to consider project deliverables. These are the tangible and intangible outcomes of a project. Once the goals, scope, and deliverables are determined, you need to consider success criteria. Success criteria are the standards by which you measure how successful a project was in reaching its goals. Another important consideration is your stakeholders. Stakeholders are key to making informed decisions at every step of the project, including the initiation phase. They're the people who both have an interest in and are affected by the completion and success of a project. As a result, they're often instrumental in determining the goals, objectives, deliverables, and success criteria of a project, from coming up with the idea to outlining their expectations of its results. As you move through the initiation phase, it's your job to ensure that you understand the needs of the project's stakeholders early on. It's also your role to ensure that all stakeholders are in agreement on the goals and overall mission of the project before moving on to the next phase. Now, let's talk about resources. Resources generally refer to the budget, people, materials, and other items that you'll have at your disposal. It's super important to think carefully about those pieces early on. No one wants to get started on a project only to realize halfway through that they don't have enough money or enough people to complete the work. That would be a mess. Finally, once you've established your goals, scope, deliverables, success criteria, stakeholders, and resources, it's time to create a project charter. A project charter is a document that contains all the details of a project. Project charters clearly define the project and its goals and outline what is needed to accomplish them. A project charter allows you to get organized, set up a framework for what needs to be done, and communicate those details to others. Once you've drafted the charter, you would then review the document with key stakeholders to get their approval to move into the planning stage. Coming up, 
You'll learn more about Project Charters and even get the chance to create one yourself. Congratulations on finishing this video in the Google Project Management Certificate. Access the full learning experience, including job search help, and start to earn your official certificate by clicking on the icon. To view the next course in this video, click here. And subscribe to our channel to learn more from Google Career Certificates.